<laughs> and take 52. Um, okay. Hey, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I wanted to talk about the burn pyramid, and it's something I never talked about, but I talk a lot about different connections of it in the videos in which I produce. And recently, I've done two videos recently where I talked about preparing a firewood, which in the case of the burn pyramid, which is, consists of three things, oxygen, heat, and fuel, the preparing of wood is obviously talking about the fuel concept of it and making sure your, your fuel aspect of your burn pyramid is in great shape. And then overheating of the wood boiler was another video that was recently done, which is talking about the oxygen that gets in, not enough oxygen or too much oxygen getting into your furnace, which is causing overheating or not enough heat in your boilers. So I wanted to enlighten everybody about that and go a little bit deeper into it. So problems that these two videos do not cover is I hear, well, my stove smokes a lot, or certain brands smoke a lot. Why is that? Are they burning garbage? Are they burning tires? No, not really. Because the, the variables, of the three ingredients to the burn period is not being met. For example, if you are creating a lot of smoke, um, what will happen is that the fuel might be cruddy. It might be a very moist or damp or just a, a junky piece of wood. Like, uh, I believe it's uh, the worst wood I remember seeing was bubblegum or something. Um, but the qualities of wood and a weeping willow is a terrible burning wood. So you have the fuel factor. Um, and then maybe you're not getting enough oxygen, okay? Um, if you're not getting enough oxygen, that means you're not generating enough heat, that you don't have a good coal bed. So all these ingredients can cause a lot of smoke. And I'm going to go into the other parts uh, more in depth later. My water temp on my boiler is low. It's not keeping up. Once again, do you have enough air getting into your system or egg being able to exhaust out of your system, your chimney clogged? How's the fuel? Is the fuel good or is it not good? And the heat, do you have a good coal bed? Obviously you need all three to make this all happen. Um, and if you're low on any of them or not having a good optimal situation with all of them, you're gonna have all these factors as a problem. Now, where this video was originally came up with is these two videos covered the overheating and the fuel source, but I got a lot of these questions, which made me realize that I wasn't explaining the other parts of this. Lots of creosote buildup. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this, and this gets kinda complicated, but it's really not. Um, and I'll, I'll go back, I'll put the technical terms in here as well as the kind of the simplistic terms, if you will. So. With the pyramid, we have the three elements. Now, when you put these three elements together and you make a fire, what it does is it creates carbon molecules. Carbon molecules are basically smoke. Some smoke is more dense than others. Some smoke is different colors than others. And if you're burning optimally, you have no smoke. So we're gonna talk about that as well. So when you're burning, it can create carbon molecules, which I'm gonna identify as CM here which is your smoke. And what carbon molecules are, when you see a visual smoke, is unburned carbon molecules. So when you are in optimal range on the heat side, when the combustion temperature of that chamber that you're burning in is 500 to 800 degrees, you're gonna see a yellowish orange flame. At 840 degrees to 1100 degrees, most wood is being able to combust at any point at 1100 to 1600 degrees, now you're burning charcoal and carbon molecules. That means that when you take out your ash, if you have got pieces of charcoal, you're not burning in that, time, uh, that temperature range. And if you see smoke coming out of your chimney, you're also not in the uh, gasification. That's what uh, these new units are, basically saying, according to the EPA, is that the new EPA certified stoves have to be in a gasification mode 80% of the time. That's what they're talking about. Traditional units also can stay in the gasification peak for long periods of time, depending on how well you prepare your three ingredients. So, when the carbon molecules come out of the fire, little or none, um, if you have a lot of carbon molecules, you have a lot of moisture from your fuel, 
those two combine, they will attach as they're coming out the chimney, they will attach to a cold surface. Okay. Anything that's cold inside the burn barrel, so this is kind of a rudimentary picture here, and the fire is inside the burn barrel. The water jacket is roughly 180 degrees, just for this video's case. That means that that water is cooling that chamber, this inside chamber, which is trying to get up to 1600 degrees, which is a gasification burn. But the, the, it's keeping it cool. That's why you have a lot of creosote in these traditional units. But it doesn't hurt us because we don't have creosote fire. So if it's going to catch on fire, it's going to catch on fire and help heat the water. But when it's leaving the unit out the chimney, and however the factor is, is that the, the smoke will attach to cold surfaces. Now, a lot of this problem has been solved by the stainless steel, triple wall, double wall, class A chimney, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, because what that does is that keeps the air nice and warm until it gets out of the chimney, which prevents a lot of the creosote. But creosote will catch and you'll hear it fall periodically inside your unit, but it will fall and build up a pile so the, the unit doesn't breathe very well. So the air comes in to the wood boilers and it can't exhaust because you've got a pile of little pieces of creosote sitting in the bottom. So you've got to be able to clean that out. And sometimes with the cold air coming into the top of the chimney, you'll get a ring of creosote built up around the chimney caps. Basic chimney caps like this will catch a lot of creosote, and which I don't recommend for the wood boilers because they just clog up so quickly, or these are what I call spark arresters. They go inside here and they, they help uh, reduce the amount of sparks that are coming out the the top of your wood boiler. And it, they do work, but they do fill up with creosol. Once this fills up with creosol, you have very little exhaust, which now making your unit not run very well. And possibly not getting up to temperature and just lots of smoke. Because again, if it's not getting a lot of air, it's not burning hot, which is heat, and your fuel is good, there's your problem. So that's why the creosol happens. Now, there's different products such as anti-creosote. Uh, I've seen these uh, creosote logs. These things work to help take it off. It is not the fix. The fix is, is actually this helps you. It removes the, the um, kind of the sticky compounds to the creosote to help you wire brush it out or something like that. Now, I, we carry a pulpery of these chimney uh, sweeps. And basically, they work fantastically. We have a poly, six inch round. This is for the six inch chimney, class A chimneys. And um, we have a homeowner's version in a professional grade. Um, you can see the prices up on the website or the catalog if you like. And what they will do um, is you put them, attach them to a drill and to a flexible rod and you run them up and down and it will clean it out. I recommend the polys on the stainless steel. Um, they make a wire brush version, which you should use for the steel chimneys. And the ones, people who have the wood boilers with the steel chimneys, the older style, they're, I, most of the boilers today are not built with uh, steel anymore, chimneys. The metal ones is what you need. And that creosote is so difficult to remove that it planned to be there for a while because it builds up a lot and uh, it's hard to get off. It's like a, it's like literally a tar. So, um, that's, be patient with that and maybe get some anti suit spray to help break it up. Now, if you have a pellet stove or some of those other things, there's similar things at the same level. The little balls at the end to prevent it from getting stuck in the corners or in the bends, 90s. And those who have EPA certified stoves, um, even though we're not dealing with the creosote um, through the heat exchanger, but on the airflow, uh, because you've got to clean those tubes. And again, stainless steel, uh, I mean, a, a, a brush for uh, milled or mild steel and, and uh, poly for stainless steel. Okay, so as I pointed out, the brushes and all that stuff, that is the real fix to fixing the problem. If you don't fix the problem, you're going to be into one of these problems, the water temp not getting up to temperature, lots of smoke and lots of creosote buildup is the effect of not doing your maintenance on your boilers. It is important. Um, if you don't do it, there's chimney fires and stuff like that. Outside wood boilers, we really don't have a big issue of burning down a home or anything else. 
uh, because we're outside and we're usually standing alone. But if you want the unit to run like the day you got it when you bought it new or if you didn't, it makes it run tip top. Doing the maintenance is important and overall it'll make the unit last much longer. Creosol and, mo and moisture, okay, carbon and this creates an acid when it's mixed together. So if you leave it and let it build up, it will eat steel and stainless steel. Well, I hope this video helped. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to drop a note below. Uh, I try to answer them as fast as I can. But anyways, I'll be coming out with new stuff. So please hit the subscribe button and I'll keep them coming and I'll keep you aware of what's going on. Thanks for watching and happy heating. Have a great day.